Take my bride, let's go for a ride in my new fangled automobile. Just where we will go, nobody knows, but it's sure a great way to feel. Behind the wheel of the speed me to steal, it's my new fangled automobile. Hello and welcome to Vintage Car History. I'm Wild Bill. Back in the 1970s, my dad and I built a go-kart using a small engine from a lawnmower. Mom, of course, was horrified, but we all survived the very questionable safety and reliability of the vehicle. And in the early days of the automobile, many people did the same thing acquired an engine and built a car a, you know, for their own use and amusement. But if you decide to go into the car business, then the goal is to make money. And the first to actually produce a car and make a profit from them in the USA were the Apperson brothers. Elmer Apperson was born in 1861 in the town of Kokomo, Indiana the first son of Elbert and Anne. The Appersons were successful farmers, and young Elmer had the run of the place. He had a particular penchant for the machines that were being used on the farm and the on-site facilities to repair them. Thus, he spent most of his time in the repair shop, fixing things that broke as well as building new things. After his primary education, he left the family farm to apprentice as a machinist at a nearby locomotive and steam engine repair shop in Peru, Indiana. He honed his craft and by 1888 owned his own machine shop in Kokomo. There he continued to repair farm equipment and also patented some new cutting tools to help lumberjacks clear forests for both timber and creating new fields for farming. Now, Edgar was born in 1870, nearly nine years after his brother, and he also was a gearhead with a mechanical mind. After he finished his basic schooling, he joined his brother to apprentice in Elmer's machine shop, where he excelled. He got into bicycles at that time and made them from scratch in his brother's shop. After a year of them working together, they founded a new company called Riverside Ironworks in 1889 to make both bicycles and farm machinery. It was not long after opening their new company that Elmer got to know a certain Elwood Hayes. Elmer had been doing some work for the local natural gas company in Kokomo, making replacement parts for their pumps and various pipe fittings. Haynes was dealing with a byproduct of refining the natural gas he was pulling out of the ground, a byproduct called gasoline. Haynes saw a small internal combustion engine at the 1893 Chicago World's Fair and had the idea of using this gasoline to power it. Along with this idea was a design for a horseless carriage to use the engine. And Haynes brought the plans to Elmer. The Apperson brothers took to the task, being paid 40 cents an hour for their trouble by Haynes to make the car. Completed in the spring of 1894, the Pioneer, as they called it, was quite a success. After a few tests that summer, it was decided to put it into production in their machine shop. This car was nothing less than the first commercially viable, functional, and profitable car built in the USA. It remained in production for about a year or so, with a dozen or so produced and sold. They built a second model in 1895, with Elmer driving it in the Chicago Times-Herald race. This car had a flat twin engine and was very smooth running. Though he didn't win the race, he did receive a special prize for just how smooth running it was. Elmer continued to race wherever a race was taking place and became one of the first famous race drivers in the USA. The Appersons designed a third model, which they called the Trap, again using the flat twin engine on a more robust chassis. 
Elmer took this car on a tour of the country in 1897, and it garnered much attention and requests to purchase. Thus, they and Elwood Haynes formed a new company, Haynes Apperson, in 1898, to build these cars in mass production manner. They sold well, with customers like the Vanderbilts and the Clarks. The company was the first American automaker to actually turn a profit. Elmer and Edgar both continued to design new cars and race them. Indeed, uh, they came in first and second, respectively, at the Pan American Exposition race in 1901, which was cut a bit short by the assassination of President McKinley. But the relationship between the brothers and Elwood Haynes grew cold. Haynes considered them as employees and, and not partners. And in 1902, the Appersons parted ways to form their own company, the Apperson Motor Company, located in Kokomo, Indiana. For the first two years, they built cars similar to what they had built with Elwood. But in 1904, Edgar designed a new engine, a 40-horsepower vertical straight four-cylinder. These were big touring cars with a four-speed transmission, also very uncommon at the time. Additionally, they came equipped with electric lighting, as well as a modern honeycomb radiator. Selling for $3,500, sales were solid, and American buyers with money sought the Apperson Touring Car. In 1906, Edgar designed a massive 95-horsepower engine and fitted it to one of the biggest touring cars in America and actually was the most expensive. This car sold for $10,500, which is the equivalent of $358,949 today. Despite this, many of these cars were sold to the business moguls of the day. The following year, they produced a new model, the Jackrabbit, which many people consider to be America's first true sports car. These were initially 60-horsepower four-cylinder cars with four-speed transmissions and a light body. The term speedster entered the vernacular to describe this car. The Apperson brothers would continue to be a high-end American brand through World War I and beyond. And their exploits during the war and afterwards uh, is a tale for another day. Elmer and Edgar were true pioneers in the American automotive industry and absolutely led the way in how to make cars that will make a profit to the manufacturer. Unfortunately, profits fell after the war, and the Apperson cars were defunct and out of production by 1926. But in the first quarter of the 20th century, the Appersons were the Rolls Royces of America. Thanks for watching Vintage Car History, and we'll see you next week. Peace.